Hey guys, Craven Cormac here from DestructivePixels.com and today I've got a tutorial for you on how to create your own custom workspace within Photoshop. But first, let's talk about workspaces and what they actually are used for. Now, a workspace is basically uh, all the different panels and stuff that are open for when you're working inside Photoshop. Now, if you see here on the right side, these are two panels that I have open for my own custom workspace. And also you have the bar here on the left side, which most people are accustomed to having. It's got the move tool, the brush tool, crop tool, all that kind of fun stuff. So those are basically the two areas that you can customize to have your own workspace. Now, why would you have your own workspace? Now, for me personally, a workspace that I have customized here that you see on screen, it really helps with my workflow because it, I basically have access to all the different panels and stuff that I do use when I'm retouching or working on an image inside Photoshop. So I have the navigator panel here on the right side. Basically, it gives me a thumbnail preview of what I'm gonna be working on. I know I can see a nice big preview of the image I'm working on, but but remember, we also put a lot of our images online nowadays. And because uh, oftentimes they are represented as small thumbnails, I want to be able to see what the image looks like as a small thumbnail as well. And that's a really useful thing for me. Uh, I have the adjustments panel here because I do use adjustment layers quite often. And the reason uh, why I have the properties panel here will become evident once I actually add an adjustment layer. Now, here on the, the next panel over, I've actually brought the whole layers, channels, and pass uh, panel, like, uh, folder basically into its own strip because if you're working on an image with a lot of layers you want to be able to see all those layers very easily and by bringing that over into its own separate section you can really see all the layers. Now when I was talking about adjustment layers why do I want to have this properties thing here because it's not a panel that a lot of people are very familiar with. Now let's just add a curves adjustment layer. Now as you can see here that's the panel information for that actual adjustment layer. So say if I was to do all this and I can basically, if I click back onto the folder here with all the text and stuff like that, it basically goes away. But the properties panel stays there because if I'm doing an adjustment layer, I can have it there by default. Because if you don't have a properties panel within your workspace, it's going to pop up on a separate window here. Let me make an example. So let's say I am going to bring up the uh, swatches tool. Ah, it's actually done that. It's actually put in the panels. But most oftentimes, it will open up in a separate window, especially for the properties panel because it's not a panel that a lot of people use. It will just open up in a big separate window and it covers up your image, but by putting it inside the workspace, it really is nice and tidy. So by default, Photoshop has a couple of different options for workspaces. Most often people are using the essentials, uh, the essentials workspace, and that really is just the essentials. It shows you a color palette. Uh, it provides you with adjustment layer options and also your layers panel. So some people do actually use the photography panel uh, and that, let me just make sure it's all reset and by default it comes up with a histogram again adjustment layers and layers so how do you create your own workspace because this is really going to default to you guys how do you work you need to actually spend some time basically almost reconstructing how you work on images. Do you use the layers panel a lot? Do you use adjustment layers a lot? Uh, are you using the color swatch for something? Basically, you need to be able to decide what you use a lot and you can design into your own workspace. So how do you save it as your own custom workspace? Well, first, the workspace panel is here on the top right, just above where all the layer panels and stuff are. There's a little drop down menu and it has all the different options here. And I have saved my own custom workspace. So every time I go and work on an image, this is the workspace that opens up by default for me. So let me just drag this down here to the bin because I don't need it anymore. So let's do, let's basically recreate my workspace then. Uh, I'll start off in the photography panel because that's what I'm going to assume a lot of you are going to be using, especially I, I think actually by default, if you bring in a raw file from say Lightroom or you're opening up something from within Camera Raw and Photoshop, it will open up in the photography workspace because Photoshop is smart enough to know that. So let's go ahead and use the photography workspace. So what's the first thing I want to do? I actually want to drag out this layers panel and have it as its own separate layer. So you can see here, I've got it as it's and now in its own whole section. So you can have as many layers as you want and you'll be able to cycle through them a lot quicker. But you also have this little panel here in the middle. It's a minimized panel and it has history, actions, properties, and all the rest of it. Well, let's just drag the properties and information panel down in here. Now you need to, you can't just drag it in here because that, that just makes it a very loose panel. But what you want to do is you want to drag it into the area for the panel and you see where it glows blue. You just click and drag and drop it and that adds it in. So 
what we want next we want by default in the photography thing it has the history panel open the second one is the navigator remember the navigator thing is basically showing you a thumbnail preview I want to drag that down a little bit and the reason I drag that down is although um, it may look a little bit weird for landscape images it works a lot better for portrait images as well because it really does fill that frame and by having just a bigger size it just allows that to you basically never have to adjust it at that point adjustments the adjustment layers panel that's never going to change it's never going to need to get bigger or smaller or anything like that and the properties panel that's really all the size you need it will adjust accordingly if you have uh, if you open up an adjustment that needs a lot of different uh, property adjustments to it but for the most part you can basically just drag it out so it looks like you could probably fit a decent sized portrait in there and leave it as that for the clone source uh, that's not a panel that at least I use often so I can just drag that out click close and the last one here is the history and actions panel sometimes I use the history and actions panel but it's very rare so all you need to do is just click on the tab on where it actually says history and actions just drag it out and click X now at this point that is basically what I have set up for my own workspace so how do you save it so it's always gonna be there all you do is just go to that drop down menu and you see where actually at the bottom it says reset photography that will reset all the panels i don't want to do that because i'm going to have to work through it all over again you you also have new workspace and delete workspace so i'm going to go and click on new workspace and i'm just going to type in here tutorial workspace i hope i spelled that right of course i didn't because that's just life isn't it tutorial that's Please forgive me for my poor spelling there. Click save. And now by default, it will always be there. And as long as it's ticked, and if I was to close Photoshop and reopen it, it's gonna open up with the tutorial workspace there. And that's really all it is to it. You need to work out what panels, what, do you use layers a lot? Do you use the navigator? Do you ever really wanna use it or look at it? Do you wanna do adjustments all the time? Do you use the color swatch? You basically need to re-engineer and figure out what you use inside Photoshop, all the different panels and stuff like that. Drag it how you like it, how you want it. And then you just click and you save it. You save it as a workspace and then that's you done. You can just, I've had, you can probably see here I've had multiple iterations of my workspaces but this Craig's workspace is one that I've really found works a lot for me because I can have a very decent sized image here but I could still work on all my all my different panels and I, it's all very easily um, what's the word for it I'm trying to think of uh, it's very easily accessible for all the different things I use because I do use adjustments and you need that properties panel there for it I always want to be able to see a decent sized thumbnail of the image and layers. I have all my access to my layers and actually in my workspace I do have characters and paragraphs open down there because sometimes I do actually need to pull up and work on characters um, but for the most part I normally just leave it minimized because I don't really need it that often but I do need it enough to where I will have it down there in case I need it. So hopefully this has been really helpful for you uh, and made you aware that you can actually save your own workspace rather than having to drag panels out all the time and closing it out and go, oh, I need to find that panel again. Basically find the panels that you want, save it as a workspace and you're done with it. So hopefully you found this useful. I've been Craig McCormick and I'll catch you in the next one.